This short video will show you how to configure your spine label templates to print spine label sheets. When you're ready to print your spine labels, click on circulation and select item status, and then scan your item barcodes into the item status screen. Use the select all box to check all of the items, and then click on actions and select print labels. Catalogers can configure their spine label templates to print to eight and a half by 11 inch label sheets. Now go to the settings tab and here you'll configure whether you're printing a continuous roll printer or a sheet printer. Click the box for sheet. If you're working with a partial label sheet, you can enter the starting row and call. We'll come back to this in a minute. Now under label set configuration, check the box for spine label. Enter the number of labels in your set. Uh, it's most likely one. And you'll see column one is spine label. Now we will enter the specific page settings. You will need to know some information about your label sheets. Um, you can enter the page margins, top and left margins. In the print grid size, you will specify the number of rows and the number of columns for your label sheets. In the gap between rows and gap between columns, you'll specify the gap. Um, this units of measure measurement must be entered in valid CSS. Um, so for example, we'll put in 0 0.10 inch and 0 0.10 inch. And then we get the white space between our labels in the rows and the columns. You can click on the question mark buttons to see additional information and examples of how to enter the information for each field. You must click the question mark button to make the information pop up go away. Now we can edit our font and label settings. In the item print label font family, you can enter the font for your labels. In the font size, you can enter the font size. For example, we'll put in 12 point. In the item print label font weight, you can specify the weight. For example, you can type in bold. Oh, we can see our labels are now bolded. In the uh, item print label left margin for spine label, you would put in a margin value. Um, you'll ignore the, uh, the settings for pocket label unless you're printing a pocket label. Now the height and width for spine label are going to be important and these values must be entered in valid CSS. Again, 1.0 inch and 1.5 inch. And then we can see that the labels have been adjusted. Again, we'll ignore the settings for the pocket label. In the item print label inline CSS, you can enter additional formatting. For example, you can specify the labels should be in all uppercase or they should be centered. I'm going to enter this spine text align center and we can see that our labels are now centered. The call number wrap filter height is used to set the default height in number of lines to use for the call number wrapping. So for example, we can specify only three lines and then our uh, spine labels are limited to three lines of text. The call number wrap filter width is used to set the default width in number of characters um, to use for the call number wrapping. Um, and so here we can specify five characters and then the call numbers are limited to a maximum width of five characters. Once you've completed all of the settings, you'll want to save a label template. Enter a template name. And if you're using Hatch, you can choose a, a, your label printer. Otherwise, you'll choose default and then just save. You'll see saved print label templates. And then this will be available to choose as a template um, whenever you're printing your spine labels. If you do cataloging on more than one workstation, you can export your label templates and import them on the other workstation. 
If you're working with a partial label sheet, you can enter the starting row and column so that the labels print where you want them to print. Um, so for example, I'm going to put row two and column three. And so this moves the labels down so that it doesn't try to print on labels that you've already printed on. Thank you for watching this video, and for more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.